Hello, good morning. And um, this is my new series now, which has no name because I've not actually thought about um, names for this series. So I've just finished um, six podcasts around uh, Jobs for the Girls. And this next series is going to be people who I feel have influenced my journey since setting up uh, the Motherwell Charity. Um, and also interviewing people who are in that world of um, supporting women. So this is Emma. Good morning, Emma. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> so this is Emma Chapman, and I know a lot of you will remember Emma because we used to do, uh, at this time, ironically, on oh, a Friday, because yeah. I was laughing about that, because I've been swimming, you see, so my usual panic to get <laughs> ready. <laughs> yeah, I was always waiting for Kate. <laughs> We used to do um, a mum's chat every month on um, my radio show, which obviously I don't do anymore. So I wanted to catch up with Emma, but also um, discuss some of the work that Emma does. So introduce yourself in your own words, I guess, to start with. OK, so I'm um, Emma and I'm a counsellor um, and I work in private practice. I'm also a mum <laughs> of two girls uh, who were, well, one's turning 13 tomorrow and the other one is 11 in the month's time and um i suppose i've always had well i had my struggles with becoming a mum and that kind of sent me on the counselor journey really and um a lot of the work i do is with mums uh, who struggle with their mental health um, i've done some research around that so yeah that, that's me really in a bit of a nutshell <laughs> So talk a little bit more, because I think, uh, mm. uh, actually, I wish I'd had it all laid out. I've got four dissertations of people's to read here, two research projects from PhD. So I'm a bit frustrated at the moment that I haven't got time to go and do, because uh, I'd like to do my master's in women's studies. Um, but at the moment, I'm satisfied with reading. Others. I read your dissertation a few, um, well, I went back to that, actually, over lockdown for some information I was looking for. Yeah. Um, around services but explain about your research and when you did your masters so um yeah so my i had to do a piece of research for um my masters uh, and i wanted to do something that was quite personal and what kept coming up because when you get you'll know when you do your um training to be a counselor you have to do an awful lot of work on yourself and understand yourself and i'd struggled with depression and anxiety and really it was only through it was only through my counseling course and, and going to counsel myself that i really got to grips with the fact that a lot of that was to do with becoming a mum which sounds really awful because i love my children you know and it's actually quite a difficult thing to admit um, and I started to kind of question, well, why is it such a difficult thing to admit? You know, it's, it is a massive change becoming a mum and, and it's a whole change of identity. So then I started sort of looking that up and thinking, oh, I wonder if I could do something around that. And this word um, maternal ambivalence kept coming up and I didn't really know what it meant to begin with. I kept, I kept kind of looking around um, to try and understand it a little bit better. And it was this idea that mothers you know they can they can dislike being mothers sometimes <laughs> doesn't mean they dislike their children but it means that maybe they struggle with the role of being a mum and the fact that as a society we are really really rubbish at accepting those kind of feelings from mums um, you know, there's this idea that mums just have to absolutely love motherhood and I, all those awful Facebook posts, um, which I totally bought into, you know, mm. about, oh, enjoy every moment. They'll only be little for a certain amount of time. And actually, it was quite a slog. I found it particularly. Mm. I, I enjoy my children so much more and motherhood so much more now they're a bit older. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. Definitely. I, I love it. I love the fact I can have conversations with such mm. interesting people and but ah, when they were little, um, I found, I just found it really, really hard. I found I gave up a huge part of myself and I didn't even really know that I'd done that. I didn't, I didn't know how to be a mum and be Emma. I didn't know how to make that happen. So, so the research was very much about interviewing women who had, um, struggled with, with that motherhood identity. You'd had who'd had difficult feelings about becoming a mum um, and 
the impact that not being able to talk about those feelings had on their mental health. Um, so it was really interesting. And the impact was obviously quite a negative impact <laughs> because yeah. the shame that goes along with those feelings. Um, and, and we know as counsellors that shame is a really damaging um, emotion to hold on to and a damaging feeling. Um, and, and shame was something that came up again and again and again. Um, but the positive thing about the research, the thing that was really wonderful about it was I interviewed women who had um, children from sort of 10 ish um, up because they could kind of reflect on that time with a bit of distance. And what was lovely is they all found um, that over time they, they found a way to balance that kind of mother identity with themselves you know with their own identity i suppose and 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 kind of integrate the two and 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 find found out how to be how to i suppose just be (laughs) in as a mum um and as a woman and you know so it was it was it was really fascinating but it also was really um quite a healing process for me doing it um you know there was lots of tears lots of um having to I suppose accept what I'd been through and where I was and who I was as a mum um, and ironically the minute I started doing that the pressure that I felt kind of released you know uh, around motherhood around being a mum I, I just could be myself more around the kids and um, and I think it improved our relationship and um, yeah so it's been it's been an interesting such and I guess you improved your relationship with yourself as well I mean one of my most read and popular blogs was losing self and I was really open about that um Mm. and I guess that it I I probably now only in the last year I said that I am an ambitious person but and I've wrote a blog about that but why that's had stigma in the past Mm. um and I think I struggled with when I had to stop being ambitious because Mm. I didn't you know I didn't want to necessarily but I wanted to be a good mum and, and the two don't go hand in hand in that way um, but yeah, I think that, and I, what's something I wanted to mention is it wasn't after my first, because actually part of my life could carry on after my first, it's after my second. So for mm-hmm. some people listening, you know, it may be that it isn't your first child or why is it the second? I, my second was quite poorly and that, that's when things had to stop and change dramatically. Um, so it's a very interesting concept. And I think identity is massive for people we build our lives around our identity don't we yeah. um, and when you're not sure where your identity is you're kind of going through each day with no meaning sometimes and I think that can massively impact your mental health yeah there's like um <clears throat> there's an emptiness to that isn't there when you don't know who you are anymore there's a mm. real emptiness um and I think like you I always had this sense of like a really good sense of who I was mm. and and even down to the fact that I, I started wearing mumsy clothes you know mm. things that, things and I just like remember looking in the mirror thinking and going to shops and thinking I don't even know what to buy anymore I don't mm. I, I don't know who I am I just totally lost myself to this idea of being a perfect mum um but yeah it was it, it's so damaging it's so damaging and I love what you what you were saying about the um <clears throat> the you know the fact as an ambitious woman and who has children there's a stigma around that because oh, you you'll have to i don't know if you see my blog i wrote that i haven't shared it much shows where i'm still at with it um mm-hmm. but i wrote why is ambitious a dirty word for a woman yeah yeah and it, there's a massive thingy about that and i i know how i can be perceived in that mm-hmm. um but you, you know if you've got your balance right you've got your balance and i guess it, i'm not ambitious for myself in that way I'm ambitious for the charity and where we want to go with that and I see that for the greater good really but there's very much you you wouldn't necessarily look at a man and say that's a bad thing that he's ambitious yeah yeah there's that drive isn't there that I think I think that's the thing that I found difficult I'm quite a driven person I'm you know I'm somebody that um yeah I've always kind of had an idea of what I wanted and and I'm not like ambitious in the sense mm. I want this massive mm. career and money, but I've mm. always, I'm, I'm interested in things. Yeah, that's me. Well, we've discussed that before, haven't we? That mm. <laughs> I find everything so bloody interesting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there's, there's, again, it's that whole thing of, um, 
I found it, I find it hard now. If I find something I'm interested in and I start going down that route, I feel myself being pulled back going, okay, but you've got responsibilities just now. Mm-hmm. Oh, this can, you can look at this when, when you get, the kids get older, you know, yeah. well, you've got a responsibility to mm-hmm. kind of stay and be grounded with them. And again, I don't, I don't, and then we've talked about this a lot. My husband's fantastic. He's a brilliant dad. Um, he works really hard, but I don't think he has the same pull <laughs> to come back and take mm. on that responsibility. Um, and I think that so- society puts that on us as women. Um, yeah. I, don't, I think there's obviously, you know, we're different biologically, but I also think that it's a huge pressure from society. Yeah. Mm. It's funny because Dylan, um, we, we had a little telling off in his diary that Dylan needs to read. And if we're too busy, this is where it's put, why don't we ask Gracie or Lennon to do help? So I said to Dylan, that's a funny thing to put. And he said, I told her that you're both too busy to read with me. <gasps> the shame. <laughs> and I was like, because I put a lot of emphasis on spellings because he loves it, he's good. So that's my little role. I feel like putting, I work hard on the spellings. <laughs> but those kind of things out there they're so funny my my um my daughter said to me something about because they're in lockdown they have to carry the books so they're not allowed to like not in lockdown sorry they're um in school they're not allowed yeah, to in the bubble the books in, in school so i've got to carry them around with them and i realized she'd been carrying all she was complaining about the, how heavy a bag was and i picked it up and i was looking inside and it, and it had all of her books in for all of her subjects so i said to her the only reason I clicked that this might be happening is because I was speaking to another friend and saying, no, the bag's really heavy. God, it's awful, isn't it? And then my other friend said, maybe she's just taking all of her books. So I, I looked and I said, oh, um, I said, they're, they're not taking all the books to school every day. And she said to me, well, maybe that's because, um, maybe that's because um, they have a mum that actually helps them with these things. You're always too busy. And of course, that just tapped into that part of me that's always so anxious about the fact I'm not being a good mum because I'm always so and I'm not organized because I'm always trying to think of all these things and I I, I lost it I absolutely lost it I had to apologize to her because I was like are you calling me selfish like, a poor child and she and was you know what? Lennon's doing exactly the same exactly I heard Gracie say do you take every book to school for you every day so um I clicked um but and i'm we're doing the timetable they're on inset day today my two oh, um wow. so we're doing the timetable today and then he looks but i think he's so fearful of getting and not having that book yeah um, that's it that she's frightened of forgetting the books yeah he, he works trouble. well with uh like i love a list and tables and stuff like that quite robotic so i thought oh you'll thrive on that and i like doing it with him so that's yeah. <laughs> get it done <laughs> um so the other thing that I want to talk about, a little bit more serious, but I think it's an opportunity to, to put the word that you do suicide training, don't you, as well? Yeah, I do. I kind of run suicide awareness training. I've worked for um, a charity which was dedicated to, well, still is dedicated to the um, prevention of young suicide. Um, and I just learned so much uh, working there about about supporting people who were struggling with thoughts of suicide um <clears throat> there you go there's my daughter just popping out <laughs> um yeah so i learned so much about the um the impact on women as well you know um mothers it's it's one of the biggest killers of um of mums and it's something i can't remember the statistic now i'm trying to think of it it's a year after birth um it's the biggest killer of mums in that killer, yeah yeah and um, i think at the moment mm. what you know one of my things during lockdown was that we had to look at what services we ran and how we ran them yeah. then mums that have had children in lockdown with that no support yeah. that 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 figure unfortunately i think will only rise now mm. in the aftermath of that what's so shocking about that figure though it's been like that for years mm. and it's not coming down and mm. So it's not a common thing that people talk about, is it? As if we yeah. don't want to talk about it. And again, it comes down to um it comes down to that well, shame and fear because you know what's the first thing you often want to say, and this isn't the right thing to say to somebody, you know, but what the, the thing that I often hear people wanting to say is if somebody's feeling suicidal, what about what about your kids? You know, mm. stay stay for your kids or 
all of these kind of but then the shame of that i can't even want to stay alive for my children mm. you know that's not it's it's not a choice feeling suicidal it's you know so i think there's the shame of it but i also think there is um there's fear because a lot of the the women that i've spoken to that have those thoughts of suicide and i certainly did at some points um but a lot of those women were frightened that their children might get taken away Mm. as well if they talk about it well they're not a fit parent if they're thinking about suicide or that they'll get sectioned and then who's going to look after the kids Uh, there's so many fears about um you know just voicing and i think that what you it just taps into what we've just spoke about at the start really that they're feeling like that because of lack of hope yeah because they don't perhaps think they're going to get that support yeah but also that we're saying you know we struggled and that identity and who am i now and the shame of saying it so you, know, you can you can completely understand why people are you know and have fit, felt that and mm-hmm. i think more so because they're not having them people that they would normally i an example i've used many times i used to go and have my appointment same time every Thursday straight from work. So I'd be in work, I'd always be quite smart. I always had my nails done, always had my makeup on. And then she come to my house and obviously that isn't how I function as soon as I've got up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she reflected on that and she said, you look really pale today. And, and we talked about it and I said, look, you've always seen me in work and that, that isn't how I am. But it worries me that these mums aren't having that same contact. It's, yeah. it's a phone call and all them visuals that would give yeah. it away you know they're not seeing that and also there's the there's also the lack of family support at the moment for a lot of these women as well because i I was listening to a podcast do you know i'm trying to remember it was alanis morissette i think it was she does a brilliant podcast and it's all about neuroscience and stuff and another one of my interests that i can get stuck down a rabbit hole in anyway um but she was talking that they were talking about this idea that you know community's gone and obviously with covid even more so so we're we're not designed you're not we're not supposed to have these babies in isolation that you know so what we're doing often in this kind of more modern world is is being grandma is being auntie is being um sometimes dad is being you know um siblings sometimes you we're, we're being all of those people to our children and the pressure gets put onto the mum to be all of those things mm-hmm. and particularly in in this this life that we're living at the moment you know it's so hard i think about those early days um and i'm not sure that i would have been able to get through it without family well in fact i know i wouldn't have been able to no, get through it, it just i just i my heart goes out and we've got so many we're supporting so so many um you know because we got funding to reach out to rural areas as well so another kind of support there but one thing you just said is my favorite word um community Mm. and it's interesting because i'm working at the moment to prove that our model is based the mother well support model is based on community and how that has an impact because when i've spoken in the past it's very much that sounds very hippie-ish oh it's about community and um Mm. but actually there's a lot of academic research that shows if somebody feels part of a community and knows their place in that community then a lot of impact is had on mental health aspiration so that that's one of the dissertations i've got here well um i think it's a, a big research project for something in um jamaica if i remember right i'm in the middle of reading it but i think you know all that stripped away isn't it because they're so fearful of going near each other at the moment yeah and i think i think back to all of those baby groups that helped i remember meeting a you know a group of mum friends that were very similar to me and struggling and talking to them and just uh, just a sense of relief that you know oh my goodness so you're struggling with feeding as well and you're um (laughs) you're up all night and you know just yeah because in the world of social media it's not necessarily what we put on or if you do put on or she's attention seeking so there's no win around social media in that no there's not at all you're reaching out to the wrong places sometimes aren't you yeah and i think especially at the moment so it's great to hear that you know you're getting some funding to do some work um around that and 
you, like you say, I, I love your groups and things like, you know, I mean, I don't often put anything on there, but um, I just love the fact that they're there and people can reach out and talk in them. I think they're great on social media because it's a safe place, isn't it? Well, as safe as it can be, I think, for mums. Yeah, to and I think that I've said that well, over lockdown and I'll say this because it wasn't necessarily me that did all the hard work behind it, but we created another community online and we had more women access us than we've ever had in the past um but i guess what i will say is they're monitored very closely them groups um and so there is a lot of work that goes into them that people perhaps don't realize to make them safe um you know in fact you know, nobody can comment unless it's been authorized that kind of that work but yeah it's um community is a is a massive one for me um and i think we've got where I work, Crew and Winsford, there's some great community. Yeah. Um, and I, I, this is part of this series, really, that I wanted to do. It always gets me of how women want to support other women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah I think there's... Um... Yeah, it reminds me of um, something that happened to, to my daughter. We'd been to one of your events and she was wearing um, a Women Supporting Women badge. It was from one of your... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. It was, it was International Women's Day. Mm. Anyway, we'd been to something and she'd gone into school proudly wearing this Women Supporting... And one of the male teachers said to her, what are you wearing that for? What's that? Oh, you shouldn't be wearing that. I don't think he said you shouldn't be wearing that, but he said something about... Um, you know why why isn't it men supporting women why is it all and i'm like well i don't know why isn't it men supporting yeah. women yeah. um she was she didn't want to wear the badge again which was a shame so I suppose. <laughs> but um but i just think women women do need to support women women want to support women we there's something just so wonderful about a group of women that can really lift you know each other because there's that shared experience yeah so. definitely and i think that we have this every day we put it on the group and somebody said uh, well what about where's the manuel um charity so i was straight back at that and said we'll set it up mate like i've just set up motherwell jog yeah. on yeah. um you know this isn't this is a charity that worked hard to get to that point welcome to set up your own i'll help you <laughs> yeah exactly that exactly that you know we're not it's not it's not an exclusion thing is it it's just yeah <laughs> just, there's always one in there shouldn't have retaliated but i thought oh well, i've got a good in there because he obviously didn't expect it to be a local person that uh, founded it i don't think so no. <laughs> <laughs> he met his match on that one yeah <laughs> So are you up to anything at the moment? Any projects on the go or? Um, I'm trying a little bit to calm myself because I've got a big building job happening at home and I can quite easily get overwhelmed if I take too much on. So I'm really kind of backing off a little bit of stuff. Um, doing some lectures for counselling tutor and things like that. But um, yeah, I could get quite carried away. I want to do all sorts of training and all sorts. I'd love to do my PhD. I'd love to do some more research on that. What I'd like to do is um, do something on that maternal ambivalence and a study about about uh, postnatal depression and mm. just how much that um, how much that does create postnatal depression, you know, or what we'd call postnatal depression. I'd love to kind of look into that more, um, but yeah, that's for the future. <laughs> just I'm just trying to get by at the moment. <laughs> There's one student I'm interviewing. I think you'll love her. She's doing her um, masters on how we measure empowerment i just think that that's just amazing because we really struggled whether our our mission statement is to encourage inspire and empower the women and girls that we work and support and it was a big one do we use empower because it's such an overused word isn't it mm. but i said but we do so it's got to be you know, in there it's, it's an interesting word isn't it empowered i put something about um Oh, it was on one of the one of the counselling groups that I'm a member of. Somebody was talking about suicide, and I obviously do training, so I was just mm. promoting my training. So I do this suicide. It's all about, um, <clears throat> it's all about empowering my clients to be able to stay safe themselves. Mm. Mm. And somebody put on there, um, and I, I remember just feel ah, this is one of the reasons I don't like social media. I remember feeling attacked in my own front room. Mm. You know that feeling of just like what. Um, and they'd said, ah, oh, empowered. Um, who are you to empower anybody? You know, um, to empower somebody, you have to take away their power first. And I'm thinking, that's not, that's not my no, understanding. It's, it's very interesting. Words and overused words. You yeah. know, 
and, and I suppose what I mean is help them find their own power because yes yeah, yeah. Mm. and that's what I think that we do and, and that's why it's in that sequence so I'm really thinking about that we encourage people and then we inspire them by showcasing what others have done and peer yeah. support inspiring them and then they empower yeah. themselves so it has yeah. to be seen in that that thing as well but I'm really looking forward to that and actually she sent me a that's book it. that she thinks I'll find interesting about empowerment mm. um, and how it's foreseen um, I'll, I'll send you the link to it as well Please I'm going to get you yeah. um, so she's I'm trying to think when she's doing next week I think I'm interviewing her I and mean, she's doing the gender studies um, the masters and gender studies at Chester Uni um, so I think she'll be really interesting to to interview with that um, so yes it's a, I've got some lovely people to interview over the next four weeks really I think I'm doing one nearly every day um, I think I've got 21 people that I'm interviewing so far and there's a few more I need to add. I'm exhausted just thinking about that Kate honestly I don't know where you find the energy for. <laughs> you, but though, if you I think watching them you'll be like oh god yeah they're all very interesting yeah. they're all had an impact on me in, in a different you know very different ways impact me personally or um, you know I've helped shaped the, ch the charity as it is so um, and I guess this is a hobby of mine I just love love and that's why i missed my radio show and wanted to continue it in in some way really i missed i was thinking about that the other day i missed the radio show because it was it was but it was lovely for us to catch up as well yeah, when you yeah we we'll definitely have to start scheduling it in more and obviously i'm in the middle of trying to put that book together mum's the word so you'll have to do a piece for that oh, i'd love to yeah brilliant um because i think it, i want honest accounts of different stages of motherhood i've got quite a few that have written recently about their children going to university which is a massive different stage um oh that just made me feel a bit oh, yeah. we've got back to come haven't we oh. um, and i just want honest accounts like you know funny accounts emotional accounts so um i've got quite a few i just need to get them in an order and start trickling them out i mean i, I did my blog this week about now being a mum of two lads that are in a football team that's whole new realms <laughs> I, I keep on um, hearing about this. I've got friends. My daughter got involved in football for a little while, and thank goodness she didn't carry it on because uh, your weekends are gone, aren't they? <laughs> Unbelievable. Last week, now Lennon said they both boys train on a Saturday, and then Lennon will have a match on a Sunday, but he hasn't this Sunday, so I'm adamant we're having a day out. Um, but yeah, I mean, now it's only a Tuesday that we don't have something on now. Every night we have something on, so Tuesday is a bit of a light relief day. <laughs> it's, it's, again that's that's a part of this balance that we're talking about isn't it and mm. my kids only do one thing each but if they really wanted to obviously they wouldn't say no but there is a part of me that says hang on a minute I've got a life as well mm. I really I kind of really I'm quite determined to keep a hold of my life mm. in, in in amongst everybody else's do you know what I mean and also try and keep like try and find some peace as well <laughs> so yeah because well, over lockdown it really made me think about what you know did he go back to it all mm. and but then one by one when we've looked Dylan is in the middle of learning these swimming lessons and the other two are really good swimmers so mm. I want him to carry on swimming yeah. I'm adamant that they both carry on beavers and scouts because it's such a good discipline I think it can define who they are so they both carry on with that <laughs> they're passionate about football and it's a good yeah. so we're, we're actually dropping off in <laughs> yeah it's, I've heard quite a few people say that it's fighting isn't it one, one of mine does guitar and the other one does like a drama group um, and they've done all sorts of different things but those are the things that they're, they're interested in and, mm. and just it, want to point out this point I have a daughter she does nothing so no, <laughs> I'm, that, I'm that, secretly yeah. glad that she doesn't because imagine fitting that into the mix no. I don't I have, I have a friend whose um, daughter did ballet she's really good at ballet you know and she did it from a really young age then she had twin boys and she was just like I, they do nothing because I'm constantly traipsing around doing ballet with these two twin boys that are like you know following her bless her <laughs> <laughs> right ballet. Well, that's been brilliant catching up and we will. We'll start up and um, perhaps do one before Christmas lunch chat and try and get it more regular over the new year when we're in our some kind of norm of what life is going to be like, yeah, I think. Be I thank you for that. your time anyway. That's been brilliant. Not at all. Thank you, Kate. Um, and thank you for me and I shall look forward to watching some of the other interviews. Oh, uh, yes. I think yeah, there'll be a lot that will interest you, definitely. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. All right, bye.